Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motai Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. And you may be asking, what is up with the set change? I am technically on vacation right now, but I wanted to talk about some music, and so this video is a little late, but let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we've got song in all categories this week, 29 songs I wanted to talk about, starting off in the trash category, songs that I thought were um, very, very bad. Again, remember, this is just my opinion, uh, and don't take it to gospel truth. We've got the Alan Walker remix of Hideaway by Dick. Uh, uh, why are we remixing this now? Uh, the song doesn't need a remix. It also didn't need a remix with this little effort put into it. Alan Walker added a flat kick and killed all the resonance in Daya's vocals. This song, I, uh, I think, is very bad. They're moving into the bad category, songs that I thought were uh, bad. Uh, we've got Uber with You and Me from the new Hazardous EP. Uh, I'm not really sure I understand this EP and this song in particular. Uh, it's got this very like childlike melody with a lack of anything remotely low end on these drops. Um, the snare and kick are way too loud. It's just a messy song all around for me, so... Then we've got the Chainsmokers with No Shade at Pity from the new No Hard Feelings EP by the Chainsmokers. And uh, yeah, this is just a very... Chainsmokers song. It's poppy, it's boring, the vocals are pretty weak. That's pretty much that. As we're moving into the meh category songs, I thought were uh, pretty meh. Maybe you liking them more than me, but uh, we've got High Society and Micah Martin with Voices. Uh, very much a full rock-tronic track here. In fact, uh, it's seemingly more rock than I think actual EDM would be for the most part. And uh, honestly, it's a bit of a whatever sound for both. Uh, it's in your face, it's aggressive, but it's not all that impactful. Then we got Party Peoples and Britt Laurie with Pleasure, a simplistic deep house cut men for commercial audiences. Um, nothing overly engaging here otherwise. So we got Jonas, Blue, Galantis, and Zoe Weiss uh, with uh, Mountains. Uh, again, I mean, this is kind of just generic commercial house. Nothing else really to it. And that's all I wanted to say. Then we got Plague and Mauve with Two Life, a very surprising for this Chompo release, honestly, a stylistically very different from a driving kind of more electro house that is very common on the label up to this point. Um, this is a very like simple, cheerful, melodic house cut that really doesn't have much punch to it. Um, and in that sense, I like the change of ch tone and pace, but uh, individually in a vacuum, I just thought the song was meh. Then we got Oliver's featuring Hannah Avison with Lonely, uh, a pretty commercially leaning track uh, that's fairly by the books as a sort of like house electro pop style. Uh, Hannah's vocals are great, but the production doesn't really have anything to differentiate, differentiate itself from other electro pop house style uh, cuts. So uh, yeah, I just thought it was meh. We've got Alesso with Hypnotize from the new EP of the same title. Alesso is kind of staying away from the typical commercial house here uh, in favor of a more niche tech house sound. Uh, and I'm not really sure it's working better for him with this style. Uh, his production here is pretty stale and it feels like it could have been a live mix version of like two other songs mashed together. It doesn't feel like it's its own track. So I thought it was meh. We got Mord Fustang with Downpour, uh, a new sound of more simplistic progressive house track from Mord, Mord Fustang, but uh, with no real oomph to it, as I'm used to hearing from Ward Fustang. Um, pretty generic house with a slightly more thunderous beat to it, but uh, yeah, there was a couple tracks here that I just thought weren't that uh, overly engaging. Then we got Whipped Cream featuring Shoujo with About You. Uh, I feel as if Whip Whipped Cream has kind of lost her sound right now, lost her signature style. She's bouncing around from a bunch of different genres and sub-genres and atmospheres and styles and without really going hard after any one of them. And so um, this, again, just kind of falls a little flatter. I don't think it's a very typical Whipped Cream song. And I didn't love Shoujo's verses, and I thought the um, production was kind of a touch boring. So um, Whipped Cream, I, I, I want to hear some, uh, some constant style from you a little bit. I think um, your darker atmospheric stuff really, really works. Uh, so, And that's primarily, in, I guess, when you do the mid-tempo stuff. But uh, Let's move on to Arm & Hammer and Company feature with Never the Same. Uh, yeah, a full flavor dubstep track here with a mellow dub, bro step, and, bro step, and drum step drops. One, two, three. Uh, but that being said, all those styles were more or less the kind of generic versions of the median sound of each of those subgenres. So I just think it's kind of meh. Then we got Fortet with All Miss the System here from the 3 Plus reissue, the kind of deluxe version of the 3 album from Fortet. And yeah, this is a beautiful atmospheric ambient track, but um, I can see why it was cut from the original album as there really isn't much of a narrative going on here, at least not one that's easy to understand uh, at face value. But uh, yeah, Fortet kind of dialed back the little Foley elements as well too. And so I don't think it's that bad of a song. I just think, I just understand why it was cut from the album. 
Then we've got more Kismet with Never Be Lonely from the new Humor Me uh, EP. And this is a bit of a throwback trap track uh, with kind of bouncy synths and a repetitive melody. Uh, the first half of the track is a little too linear for me in liking a more Kismet kind of style song. But um, the second half is definitely what I wanted uh, from the first. And I wish it kind of the, the second was what I thought the second was to the first. I hope that makes sense. Probably doesn't. Uh, but we're moving on to Imanu and Grabbits with Fire. Uh, I think the song has some really unique and creative sound design. I think the vocals are great and I love the Foley throughout, but the main melody line is just not doing enough for me. Um, I think this had the ability to go absolutely nuts and they kind of chose to keep it a little bit more reserved. And I think that was uh, not the best choice in hindsight. And we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, pretty good. Uh, we got Snouse and Schnodo with uh, featuring Hannah Ogensten. Man, I'm sure I butchered those, but uh, with Foe or Friend. Um, they've labeled this song themselves as a cruisy lounge future pop track. Um, and while I think that's a bit of a very niche song category and pretty just redundant at that point, um, I do think it perfectly describes the track, honestly. Uh, it's not too out there, a little bit more chilled all about the, uh, the production here. And um, yeah, it's very easily digestible pop melody. I think this song worked. Then we got Heritage with Junket from the new Revelry EP. Uh, this cut in particular is this kind of grimy, almost vomit step track with a funky overtone, overtone to it, uh, very similar to a Grizz style song, I would say, more so than anything. Then we've got the Raise Hell remix of Riot, originally by Own Boss and Selva. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too hot on the original here, nor am I generally too hot on, Re on Raise Hell's Fonk style, um, but this actually works really well in tandem. Uh, the more subdued vocals lent itself well to the Fonk sound, and overall thought it was an improvement of a remix. So, yeah. We've got Camarion and Bensley featuring Colleen D'Angaso uh, with I Am Here, another name I'm sure I butchered. Uh, yeah, heart-pounding, driving, soul-searching dance floor drum and bass that just kind of gives. Um, not the flashiest of tracks, but Camarion and Bensley team up for some killer production uh, that isn't trying to do too much. Then we got Slumberjack with Swear You, uh, a light and grooving garage song that leans heavily into the sonically like higher elements of trap, like the, the hi-hats and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's more simplistic and light compared to other Slumberjack stuff, and I really quite enjoyed it. And we've got Dactyl featuring Lizzie Land with Idols. Um, yeah, more natural and raw sounding track that we normally get from something like This Week in EDM. And uh, yeah, I think it's a well-established tone and atmosphere right off the bat here um, from Dactyl. And I love Lizzie Land's vocals as well. Very relaxing listen uh, and go listen to that one for sure. Then we got Igloo Ghost with Pulse Angel from the new title Memory XO LP, the new album out now from Igloo Ghost. And uh, this track in particular is uh, this kind of underground, wonky, industrial track with like harsh tonal elements to it. Um, a bit of an angry listen, uh, but a solid listen nonetheless. Then we got A.G. Cook with Heartache from the new Brit Pop LP. Uh, some really nice wonky future bass here that's kind of part garage, part indie. Uh, it's a great cut from the record, and it's a sound that I've talked about in the past a little bit that I call, like, filter bass. Sounds like someone's, like, playing a ton with the, the high and low pass filter on, like, a DJ turntable. It's like a, like, all over the, this track, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. It's a sound that I think is uh, very, very niche. Then we got Nero with Draw Energy, uh, long builds into a bit of a throwback mid-tempo track, it sounds like. Um, a vocal the vocal stanza brings a ton of energy, and the production constantly feels like it's building and building and building into something even greater all throughout. So really like this one as well. Then we've got Skybreak Sharks and Luthien with Out of Frame, a new dubstep collab uh, with a bit of every kind of dubstep style here from kind of classic um, dubstep to more color base. Um, this is also Sharks' first release on Monster Cat and final Sharks track for the time being as he's going on a hiatus here. But um, yeah, I don't think this song sounds a ton like Sharks. and I think the vocals are a little muddy in some areas, uh, but overall I thought the song was fantastic. I thought the production was great and I love, um, love, love what Skybreak does on a track uh, time and time again. So then we're moving into Haywire with Change Your Mind, a bit of a typical Deep House cut from Haywire in terms of the typical industry standard sense, not really so much of his old school Deep House, like kind of like a Do You, Don't You, or a Memory. Uh, it sounds like very like a kind of more, more commercialized Deep House sound. But um, yeah, I think it's neat. It's got a punchy bass line and funky instrumentation. Uh, another track on Lost and Dreams that I think might be a part of some greater EP or LP um, from Haywire. So I'll be intrigued to see uh, what comes down the pipeline here. Then we've got Bad Computer and I'm Alright with So Lost, uh, a more commercially friendly track, uh, less kind of intense lecture house from Bad Computer, which he kind of uh, goes back and forth on from the more like intense lecture house to more kind of pop friendly. Uh, and this, I think, is the perfect in between, the perfect blend of both of those styles. Uh, the melody is an earworm. I'm Alright's vocals pair nicely with the rest of the production. Uh, this might just be Bad Computer's uh, sweet spot, I think for sure.
As we're moving into the standout category, two songs I thought were in standout this week. We're starting off with Just Gent and Solomon France featuring McCall with Invisible. Punchy, liquid, and driven drum and bass that sounds oh so clean. Um, just uh, Just a Gent's DNB is always a treat to get. I think this one in particular is fantastic. McCall's vocal delivery really ele- elevates this track from good to stand out for me as well. And so I think it all works together in nice tandem, and it's just a very clean sounding track. And my number one track of the week is Jaren with Spinning. Uh, in my opinion, Jaren's uh, first real run at a commercially viable track, uh, and it might just be his best. Um, it's got hits of electronic, hits of indie, hits of pop. Uh, it's got a lot going on and a lot in the right places. Um, this could be a launching song for Jaren's career, and I sure hope it is. And uh, with that, that has been This Week in Media. Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media, enjoying my vacation, and I will see you guys in another video.